It was the autumn of 1995, and my older brother had just rented, yes, rented, the recently released shiny new PlayStation console from my small town video rental shop. A quaint concept indeed these days. This rental store was a fun, grotty, misfit mecca that stank of cheap perfume and fags where you could rent a VHS copy of Terminator 2 and get a truly shit tattoo on your arm in the parlour upstairs, if you so wished. Ah, the 90s. Anywho, we took the sleek, Gainsborough Grey design marvel home with us, plugged it into my brother's 21-inch Grundig CRT, and were blown away. We'd also rented Destruction Derby, or Derby, and Battle Arena Toshinden, but the clear standout was a little game called Wipeout. Time, I would have mostly been playing Sega 32X games, and Wipeout was a leap in graphics, gameplay, art design and production values, the likes of which we haven't seen again, in my opinion. The game was made by Psygnosis, a brilliant developer based in Liverpool, just some 30 miles away from my hometown, but to me as an 11 year old, it was as though it had just skipped in from some other weird dimension. One of the key aspects of Wipeout's success that isn't discussed all too often is the involvement of Ubercool's Sheffield-based graphic design company, The Designers Republic. Founded in 1986 by Ian Anderson and Nick Phillips, they're best known for electronic music logos, album artwork, and their anti-establishment aesthetics, embracing, and I quote, brash consumerism and a uniform style of corporate brands. Now, if you happen to read an interview with Ian Anderson, you'll note that he does in fact talk a load of absolute pseudo-intellectual twaddle about the ideologies and inspiration behind his company's work. But you can't deny the super cool look of the designs themselves, be it their work for Adidas, Coca-Cola, MTV, Sony, or indeed Warp Records, a UK record company who've released many a fine intelligent dance music album over the years. From the ship designs themselves, to the race team logos, the swanky typeface, and the swathe of advertising billboards dotted around the tracks, the Designers Republic's work elevated this game, aesthetically at least, above the 3D races that had come before, such as F-Zero, Crash and Burn, and Power Drum. It also elevated it above contemporary games like High Octane and Cyber Speedway, and I would argue that it continues to do so today. F-Zero is a great series in its own right, of course, and many might prefer its extreme speed and more hyperbolic, cartoonish style, but in my opinion, nothing looks, feels, and sounds as cool as Wipeout. Along with Tekken, Wipeout and its first sequel tapped in to the zeitgeist in the UK. The club and dance music scene was huge at that time. To put it into a little bit of perspective, the mid-90s was a time when, despite very limited airplay, this absolutely mental track by the Chemical Brothers could make number one 
in the UK charts. In an article featured a few years ago in the Guardian newspaper, former Edge magazine staff writer Keith Stewart discusses the genesis of the game. Sony was looking for a new way to sell its comparatively expensive PlayStation console and identified a burgeoning market for games, 20-somethings. Led by Sony Europe's London-based marketing team, the company started taking commercial interest in the growing dance music scene especially the arrival of superclubs like the Ministry of Sound. Working with Ministry of Sound's managing director, Mark Ruddle, PlayStation UK marketing whiz, Jeff Glendening, managed to get a PlayStation room set up in the club, giving exhausted dancers the chance to catch their breath playing the key titles of that era. The obvious choice was racing game Wipeout. Lead designer Nick Burkham was also a clubber himself and saw the potential of a gaming music crossover. And I quote, People who go clubbing are always looking for new forms of interactive entertainment, he told Edge at the time. So Cygnosis and owner Sony tied up a range of important deals, bringing in visual icons from on-trend design agency Designers Republic and licensing music for the soundtrack from the likes of Orbital, Left Field, and the Chemical Brothers, three of the biggest dance acts of the period. In this way, the game became an extension of the clubbing experience, bringing the beats and the visuals of the club to the living room. We found out there's something different at nightclubs in London. It was so cool, we're taking you for a look. London's top clubs have more than great music, they have PlayStation. Together, they make for a great night out. This is the coolest club where you can come, you can play PlayStation and have a good time, listen to some good music as well. Everybody knows that it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. You know, the girls love the PlayStation, man, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think once you actually get the, the females on them, you know, it's harder to get them to go on there, but once they're on there, then, yeah, you can't get them off. When the conversation gets dry, <laughs> you can retire to play a PlayStation. We went across town to check out another club called the Ministry of Sound. It's new, it's hot, and it has a whole room devoted to PlayStation. Video games fit right in with the club's smoke and light show. Club owners told us that PlayStation helps bring in new people. Since then we have better facilities to offer um, than other clubs. Um, you know, it just gives them more value for money being able to play on the PlayStations and see new games that aren't out in the shops or and stuff like that really. Playing your favorite games in a nightclub is a perfect fit, unless someone's trying to ask you a lot of questions. <laughs> I've just lost my game! Oh, sorry. Wipeout achieved this goal flawlessly, and I would argue that, along with the Tekken games, it was the most important game series of the PS1 era in terms of establishing this nascent behemoth that was the PlayStation brand, at least in the UK and Europe. Wipeout was a launch game for the PS1 in the UK, and it immediately caused a stir. It hurts me to say, but to broad swathes of the general public, this game made Sega and its initial wave of poorly converted arcade titles for the Sega Saturn look crude, unhip, 
and somewhat out of touch. While clubbers grinned, sweated and chewed their own faces to the pumping soundtrack and super cool art design of Wipeout, the average arsehole on the street looked at astonishing, groundbreaking titles like Panzer Dragoon for example and simply shrugged their shoulders. Sony got a fantastic start right out of the blocks and Sega, despite creating some truly mesmerising games over the course of this generation, was never really able to establish the Saturn in the Western market. In a side note, the Saturn was a relative hit in its native Japan, but that's another story for another time. I am a Sega maniac, but this is one of those PS1 games that I absolutely love. It was a stroke of genius on Sony and Cygnosis's part, and it's certainly not a case of style over substance either. This is an excellent futuristic racing game. I never get tired of whizzing through the grimy, futuristic tracks in the campaign mode. The handling and physics are like no other game before or since, as you glissade around the courses, applying liberal doses of air brake with the shoulder buttons, all the while enjoying the incredibly tactile sense of weight and momentum to these agile hovering craft. The soundtrack too is absolutely awesome. A couple of years ago I went with my wife to the beautiful islands of the Azores far off the west coast of Portugal. One night, tired out from a long day's hiking, we decided to get a load of wine in from the supermarket and get pissed in our little rented house. While browsing YouTube, we came across the Wipeout soundtrack and proceeded to dance around our living room all evening like a pair of absolute pituitary cases. It was a damn good lark. In fact, funnily enough, we're pretty sure our daughter was conceived in the Azores, which might go some way to explain why our little girl is such a grade A lunatic. Wipeout was a huge hit and a very important game indeed, but the fire didn't burn for long. The third game came out in 1999 and marked a move along with UK dance music itself, away from grungy, trancy sci-fi towards a cleaner, pastel-coloured, more Balearic aesthetic. There was already a definite lessening of effect here, and the game turned out to be a financial disappointment. But for a brief moment in time, Wipeout was dead centre of a wonderful confluence of gaming, graphic design and popular music. Thankfully, we've had some excellent sequels and spiritual sequels in the intervening years. And as I don my bucket hat, get my glow sticks out and drop a couple of Mitsubishi turbos, I say, here's to many, many more. <laughs>